Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today in the area of leaving a legacy of great cars, well, my friend Dennis, good to see you. Hey Lou. Tell us what you have here today. Well, this is a 1926 Bentley. And it's a Bentley set up in Le Mans style. It's a race car. And it was used for winning actually a lot of races back in the 20s. The uh, W.O. Bentley, who was the founder and leader of the company, built a lot of race cars that were very, very successful throughout the 20s and into the early 30s. And then in the 30s, where most of the car companies uh, collapsed because of the Great Depression and the expensive nature of some of these higher-end cars, the company collapsed. And so that was the, at the end of this era of car. Then the brand was revitalized and came out with newer Bentleys in years after that. So let's take a look at our original Bentley. So Dennis, come right alongside yep. me. Come right over here alongside me so I can show your car. So how long have you had this one? Uh, about three years. Okay, so this one is one of the relatively new ones for you. We are gonna take the top down and show that too. But uh, there's a number of interesting things about yeah, this Yeah, tell me, car go ahead. I'll just feature it and you, you point them out to me. And so first, the cars had race car numbers on the front. This was obviously number nine. And if you come a little closer, we'll look at some of the features of it. They had adjustable suspensions that were pretty amazing. You can see down here, that's a suspension adjustment. And you could adjust for racing or for the road, depending on how you want it set up. And you'll notice the leaf springs that come in there, they're covered with a leather shroud that comes over them. And the big, huge drum brakes that are over in here is the brakes of the era. And then, of course, the lighting systems. You have these huge lights that were used again for racing. And uh, that's the Bentley logo that you have there. And these were all Lucas lighting. And Lucas, which I like to refer to as the Prince of Darkness, because the Lucas cars I've had, the lighting never worked. And so this is a, a Lucas original set of, of electrical for the lighting, and then everything else is not. The obviously, engine, obviously we have the rock uh, guards on there. Yes, rock guards for racing, of course. And the turn signals, and everything works. <clears throat> and then the car itself, you notice over here, the car in the hood area, it had these leather straps to keep the bonnet down from bouncing up. And when you wanted to release them, what you did to take a look at the engine, you would release these side straps here, like this, and then you could lift up the top to get a look at the engine, which is truly a piece of art. And you'll notice uh, in the engine, these were four-cylinder engines, and this is a four-and-a-half-liter engine, which means that four liters uh, have for a That's a, a big engine at that time. Very big engine, yeah. So a four-liter engine uh, has uh, a four-and-a-half-liter engine. It means it's 1.125 liters per cylinder, which is probably twice the size of the typical car today. So it had this huge bore and stroke with a relatively low RPM. The car doesn't rev more than 3,000 RPM. And then you'll notice in here they have an auto vac system, which is the pressurizing system for the gasoline. And you have, you'd pump it up and you'd pressurize it through here. And here they have the magneto system. And the magneto system was the electrical control system and then the dual carburetors in here. And you'll notice the uh, column for the drive shaft comes in closed. And that's the original Bentley low tag. Yeah, yeah. And here's the drive shaft right down here yeah. for the steering column. And it connects across directly into the steering. That's and a, the car, the VIN on this car, interestingly, is 911. It's a three letter VIN. Is that right? Yeah. So here's the the carburetors, and it's the carburetor floats that release it. SU. So uh, yeah. SU carburetors. And it's got the fuel bowls, but the, just the worksmanship on these are amazing. And the cars, it really runs fantastic. It's a great car from a mechanical point of view. While well, you're putting you it have, together, I want to stand one more step back, just because the sun's hitting it now. Take one more step back and yep. take a look at take it in. And here on the side, you have these little boxes, which were the only compartments for storage. And those uh, boxes had screw-on tops, and you'd put your tools in them. And on the other side, you have this, the battery box where the battery was contained. Let's go take a look. Notice there's only one door here, and there's that's only in one, the back. There's only one in the back for the passengers, and only one on the other side for the driver. And there are the fuel arrangements with the two cutoff switches, the fuel tank, 
fuel tank had an interesting valve arrangement where you pull this up and then you lift that to get into the fuel. Big tank. And, yeah, it's a big tank and it's a car that uses a fair amount of gas so, as you can imagine. The, uh... And these are the levers that have pressurized the tank. So you have it, it's sealed tank, it's pressurized. You have fuel pumps in one there. One says P, one says B. And, um, and an M yeah. and an R. Yeah, and those are the codes from the original flow system through the auto vac, which we modified and put in an electric fuel pump because the auto vac was just not reliable. So it was set up so that it could be pressurized, but in this one, to make it reliable so we could do rallies with it and drive it on a regular basis, it's got an electric fuel pump. Okay, let's so step back for just a moment and show the overall back of the car. And we are going to take the top down, but I wanted to show it to you with the top up. Now it has this yeah. massive exhaust pipe. That's, and that's the exhaust of the era, which fanned the exhaust out. It's quite loud. And <laughs> which we're going to find out. It's also the wrapping on there is the insulation to keep yourself from Was burning yourself. Was that period correct or period is that correct, something? Yeah. Really? Right. Okay. Different wraps. And then here's the battery box. The battery box is in here. So just and a reminder, the, the door for the front. Yeah, door for the front there. And I want to show all this. And there's your door for the back. And let me show these gauges. These are all the original gauges and they all have all been rebuilt. And you can see it had tremendous instrumentation. So you had you know, pressure, all the things that you need. You had pressure, temperature, uh, pressure for the fuel, uh, all the things that you needed to get it started. And up on the steering wheel, you notice there's an advanced retard because at the time, there's an advanced retard lever on the one side and the other side's a throttle. Throttle's on the left and the advanced retard is on the right. And that advanced retard was used to advance the spark because you were never sure what octane gas you were going to get. And you had octane as low as 50 octane. So you'd have to adjust the spark advance so that the engine would actually run. With today's modern gas, that's actually been disconnected. You don't have to adjust the, uh, the advance. And now you're now, sharing the pedal arrangement. The Go pedal ahead. The pedal arrangement's really unusual because you notice, first of all, it's a right-hand drive, of course, because it was British. The pedal arrangement, three pedals, of course, for the manual transmission. The left is the clutch, but the gas is in the middle, and the brake is on the right. So, and is this your high beams? Uh, and Yeah. And, okay. And so when you're driving the car, you have to be very careful that you don't um, make a mistake with the gas and brake since they're reversed. That right pedal is the uh, is the brake pedal. Brake, gas, gas, clutch. Pedal. Right, exactly. And then, and then this shift, is this here, is that a reverse? It's a reverse pull, lift pull up. up. Okay, yeah, got pull it. Pull it up and that allows you to open the reverse gate. Makes sense. So me. that's basically the way that works. And you have the switches for all the lights work. It's a, a really great car. Let's show this side of the engine compartment, which is a little bit different than the other side too. I noticed too, because it was a race car, look, they kept that piece right there to hold that on, that wire piece, so this wouldn't spin off. Right, yeah, and there, the wiring was to make sure that it was safe. If you usually access the engine from the other side, you can access it from this side, but the other side is the primary access method for this car. And look at the, that exhaust. The engine. Yeah, that's the exhaust. Holy crap. The manual, and there's your uh, oil. So it's, um, and this car also has an overdrive unit in it. It's got an electric overdrive unit. That's beautiful, that big yeah, Bentley right. yep. monogram and the B there. What's, yeah. what do you put, oil well, in here? Yes. Oil goes so in here. Give me one more the... second. I think I want to get some of these pieces here. Mm -hmm. Because there's a high probability, Dennis, I'm not going to see many 26 Bentleys. Let me step right on this side of here for one moment. I just think I can get a closer shot of that. And you have the magneto arrangements on each side. And we've only driven this car for a little bit, but it's already been an instant friend maker. It's not something you normally see. <laughs> <laughs> no, not something you normally see. Wonderful. 
Dennis, why this car while you're putting it together? Why this car out of all the cars in the world? What made you say, I think I need a, uh, I think I need a 26 Bentley? Well, I've always liked and I've been very impressed, of course, with the Bentley engineering and what went into this, which you can see when you looked at the engine compartment on it. And I always had wanted one and finally one came up for sale. And uh, when I bought it, it, it had a lot of problems. It didn't run well. It had a radiator leak. It had all sorts of oil leaks. Um, we tried doing a, a rally. My wife and I tried doing a rally in, in, in uh, Arizona, and it blew up in the desert and had to have the whole thing rebuilt. And by the so way, your wife said that was the most enjoyable run you've had because she <laughs> parked this car quickly and got in a wonderful convertible. That was exactly right. So we got into a modern car, which she liked. She yeah, she enjoyed that. that. Yes. Well, let's get into this uh, older one. Now, I'm curious. You've got horns on the front. Yeah, there's horns And the I side. see a they're horn on the side. Yeah, they're connected. Together. Which, are all of them running yeah, when you... Yeah, they all run. Yeah, and when you, when you blow the horn, they run at the same time. Okay, let's do it. Let's okay. let's get in. Let's blow the horn. Uh, let's take the top down, shall we? Okay, sure. Okay, I will stand back while we take the top down. Okay, Do you need uh, a helper? Yeah. And voila, the top is down. So let's take one more look with the top down. To get a look at our racer. And we just dropped the windshield. So you can see you notice the, the race car stuff. You notice the windshield washer motors, there's one on the passenger side, not on the driver's side, because it would block your view. Nice. Good night. And we'll take one shot at the back. Dennis, I, Dennis, I think we, uh, let me just go stand over here saying, Dennis, I think we need to uh, take it for a ride. We'll take it for a ride. Let's, Let's do, do that. It. fun to drive. You have to uh, drive it with sync. You have to double clutch every gear up and down because there's no synchromission.
so much for being on my car story. Well, it's been really fun, Lou. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Thanks.